Okay, uh, yet another week and a lot of updates. And uh, this week, of course, main event is uh, Microsoft Build Developers uh, Conference. Uh, but there are many other announcements from other sources as well. So here I show uh, Microsoft Build and uh, Tinybox, uh, which has six GPUs. And uh, yeah, this is like, <laughs> if you want to have something in the house, uh, with more than three kilowatts. Uh, yeah, this is a great machine. And of course, Memorial Day, this Monday is an official holiday in USA. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, Microsoft Build 2024 every year in Seattle, um, Washington. And uh, uh, so it's a developer conference. It's several days, you see 21, 22, 23. And uh, the first day was all about AI. Well, next days they spoke about uh, .NET and uh, other development stuff, but I, I only want also to concentrate on AI. So one big thing is uh, Copilot. Uh, so they are introducing it uh, anywhere. So Microsoft 365 is Microsoft Office, Microsoft Teams. So chatbot, agenda management, note taking, uh, chat moderation, contextual question answering. You can uh, give it uh, some uh, projects, uh, tasks uh, to Copilot. You can create custom Copilots and agents, uh, but uh, not available right now, will be later in the year. Uh, another big thing is laptops. So there are several uh, different uh, chips from Intel, uh, Qualcomm, uh, Snapdragon, which is a story by itself, and AMD. And there are a lot of new laptops which are specifically designed uh, to handle AI tasks. They have a key on the keyboard <laughs> for AI. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting. And they're becoming comparable with uh, MacBook Air with the Apple Silicon chip. But we only will have them at the second half of June. So right now, uh, we don't really have a real life comparison. Um, Phi 3 Silica. So this is a version of uh, the Phi model, Microsoft model, large language model, which is optimized for neural processing units. So in the Qualcomm Snapdragon um, chip, uh, they have uh, CPU, GPU, and NPU. NPU, it's a neural processing unit. And so this is the model to run on it and it was specifically optimized. The new feature, which is very controversial, is recall. That means that your computer remembers everything you are doing, like what is on your screen, what applications, and so on. So you can ask questions about your history. So it basically has AI-powered photographic memory, but it creates huge concerns about privacy. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of videos discussing that. Uh, Windows Semantic Index Tool. So when you have a lot of uh, pictures, uh, a lot of text, whatever, and how you do search, how you ask uh, system about something, you need to create an index. And nowadays it should be semantic index and they have their own version, which is called Windows Semantic Index. Um, another interesting tool is a co-creator tool. So this is uh, working with uh, different apps, external partners like Adobe Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve and so on. Uh, Phi model, there is another version, Phi 3 Vision, with uh, 4.2 billion parameters. It is in preview. Um, what it does, it does visual reasoning. So you can show it a, a picture or text, and it can transcribe text from images. It can analyze the tables, the graphs. And uh, yeah, so this is a, a new model. A Snapdragon Dev Kit from Qualicon. So this is a small computer, you see it uh, down. It's comparable with uh, Mac Mini, or now it's called Mac Studio, right, uh, from Apple. So it has uh, the uh, latest Snapdragon Exalite CPU, which has CPU, GPU, and NPU. So it, it's not really CPU, it's a chip. It's called System on Chip, C -O uh, SOC. So it has 32 gigabyte of system memory, 512 gigabytes uh, disk, uh, it has a lot of ports, uh, Ethernet port and audio jack. So it's a, it's a small, convenient computer. And uh, yeah, really small and cost about $900. So, well, we'll see them when we'll see them, right? But it looks very nice. Uh, LM Studio Server LMS CLI to run models locally. I tested this. Uh, I really like it. 
so so what is it uh, let let me show you we have uh, lm studio so we have two common ways to run uh, models uh, locally one is olama and another is lm studio so th this is lm studio and uh, it has uh, so you, you can do the chats right and you can do local server and you can start the server with uh, some model so you can select a model to load and then uh, you can start the server uh, but now you can do it from terminal so there is now lms utility uh, which you can install um, i think it's in uh, written in javascript because uh, the way you install it using bootstrap and then uh, once you have it, so which LMS, so it, it, it is executable. So I can uh, say, for example, LMS uh, status, right? So let, let's see how it works. And it says the server is not working, right? So let's try start the server. So notice I can do it without uh, uh, clicking with my mouse on the, on the GUI. Okay, the server is running. So now I can check what models I have, right? So again, I do it LMS LS, and it gives me that I have uh, a lot of different models. Uh, let me start one of them. So I can say LMS load, right? And then I can give it uh, a model. Okay, minus GPU max. And okay, I already did this command before when I was preparing. So. Okay, I loaded the model, so the, uh, now I can talk to the model. And uh, the way you talk to the model, uh, so the server is running on specific uh, port. So if I do, let's say, LMS server status, uh, it will tell me, uh, okay, this is because it's a big LMS server status. Okay, it says that it's running on port 1234, which is the default. And I can talk to it. So I can do curl, uh, which is sending HTTP request to this local host at port 1234. And then I can ask it a question. Like here, the question is, how do I init and update a Git sub module? Okay, well, let me change that. Uh, why is... Uh, the sky blue let's do traditional stuff okay and when i take this command and i send it to the server so i send it to the server it starts responding and each of those chunks you see on, on the right they, they're a little bit different on the right so, so let, let me actually stop it so you see uh, here it says the data dot check some S, R, and so on. So th th these are the tokens. Th 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 this is the response of the model. So you need some sort of script to collect them together to get the output. So here is an example of how you can do it using from uh, Python. Uh, you actually using uh, OpenAI module because this model follows uh, the uh, rules of the game. Uh, okay, so let me take this right and run it from python so here i start a python session i copy this code so what's happening now it's receiving all these chunks uh, back right uh, why is the sky blue and then it prints it out all at once right so the sky appears to be blue a phenomenon called relay scattering and and so on so great but notice that this piece of code, uh, like I haven't invented it, like uh, where I took it from. So if you open the application and go to the server, here you can see all these small snippets how to run the code. So I just uh, copied this code and that's uh, how to do it. Now, uh, I can do the streaming, right? So here I started the server, I loaded the model, and then here's the same code as before, but I added stream equal true. And then instead of printing the whole response, I do for chunk in response and I do this. So let me take this code, go here, boobuch, and now you see streaming. As it receives the pieces, it prints them out. So great, everything works. Uh, next, uh, how to create a custom model. So th this is an interesting thing. Uh, I, I was uh, 
thinking for myself, what should I use, Alama or LM Studio? They both are very good. I'm more accustomed uh, to Al Alama. Let, let me make it a little bit bigger, so maybe, okay. So uh, what I can do, uh, let me show you. So I will I actually put it in uh, downloads here. So first I can uh, go to this link. And this is one of the many, many uh, hundred thousand to hundreds of thousands models on Hugging Face. So, so this is the model and uh, this is under Prune AI, Abacus AI, Llama 3, uh, Smog, 8 billion parameters, GGVF. Okay, so I go to files and versions, and here I can download, I specifically downloaded this one with the uh, eight bit uh, quantization. Okay, so I downloaded the model and this is this model. It is uh, eight and a half gigabytes, right? So then I created the model file. You see, it's, it's a text file. And it says that take the model from this file in current directory. So this is this llama smog, okay. Then uh, I create a template. When I say create, I don't actually create it. Uh, what I did, uh, okay, let, let me show you. So uh, all llama list, and it shows me my models, right? So for example, I do all llama show, and then, um, let, let me take some of the llama models. It do, doesn't matter. And then I ask uh, what what to show. Uh, like if I don't say this, it will tell me that I have to provide either license or model file parameters something. Okay, so I do model file. So it will show me what should be inside model file. Most of it is a llama three license, right? And uh, other stuff, uh, there is actually not a lot of stuff. Yeah, these are some comments. This says where the model is coming from. Well, in this case, it was already installed and it's under Dota Llama. And then there is a template, parameters. So th th that's all I need, right? Uh, for, for, to be able to make a working model. So here, uh, exactly what happens. I created this file. So I say, take it from this model file this will be the template for prompts and these are parameters to stop. That's it. Okay, so now I can create the model. So let me do this. All llama create. So now I need to give it a name. So here I already ran this command. You see, I call it dragon 8b and I say minus F option, which is file. And I provide this file, which is this file right here. And then I just uh, do this error. Oh, because I'm in the wrong directory. So I have to go to downloads. And yes, because my files are sitting in the in the downloads. Okay, so now what happened, it transfers the model in my home directory under dot alama subdirectory where all the blobs are. So I'll just give it a few seconds. And uh, so just think about it. You have hundreds, well, at least 100,000 models on uh, uh, Hugging Face. So you can select the model. So let's say you're watching a video about some new model and you really like it because of some features. So you can download it from Hugging Face and then uh, you can uh, create a llama model from it. So now I do all llama, uh, just a second, all llama list. And I have this dragon 8b. So I can say all llama run uh, dragon 8b. It loads it uh, in the server. And uh, now we can ask uh, why is the sky blue? And you see it works, right? So you can now uh, have not only models available on Alama website, but you can also select better models. For me, it's important because I, I really like to use Alama to call it from my Python scripts. Uh, but uh, like Llama 3 is a good model, but uh, the default original uh, model has only eight, um, 8K context length and I need more. I need maybe 64 or maybe 128K. So I, I need to try different models with longer context length uh, for my task. Um, anyway, returning to the presentation, 
so I just showed you this, I provided some uh, links for YouTube videos which explain how to do this. Uh, this is the model I used, these are commands I ran. Okay, uh, next. Mistral 7b uh, version 3. So it was just released and it is on Hugging Face. Uh, and you can, it's already on Alama. <laughs> so you can, you can run it like this. Uh, just on Alama website, look for Mistral and then find the version three. And there are multiple quantizations. So you select whatever you want. Um, Mistral also has their own library to run it. So you can explore this option as well. So it is better model. It uses better tokenizer and it uh, has extended context length, 32K which is probably good for most, but unfortunately not for me. I need like 128. Okay, uh, next, yeah, this is about this model, which I just uh, downloaded, the fine-tuned version. So this is very interesting. Uh, this is uh, Abacus AI uh, company, and they made fine-tuned version of Llama 3. And, uh, and then it was quantized uh, by Prune AI, it is on um, um, Hugging Face. So these are a lot of links. So Smog is a dragon and main antagonist uh, in The Hobbit. And so this, this is a picture. So it looks like it's a, it's a very good model. Okay, NVIDIA growth. Uh, yeah, people are very excited about NVIDIA. So this is the stock price graph uh, for five years from yesterday. And uh, so, yeah, it was grow growing tremendously, but uh, what's interesting is this graph. So the dark green meaning data centers. So you see what's happening I, and the light green is, is gaming. So the, you see the gaming was growing a little bit, then it uh, went down, uh, become uh, narrow, but the dark green, which is data centers were growing, growing, growing very fast. And uh, yeah, so NVIDIA growth, the market capitalization is more than 2 trillion and uh, yeah, 30,000 employees. It's a big, fast growing company. Okay, next, uh, a little bit scandalous topic is about uh, George Hotz, uh, amazing guy, uh, known for hacking uh, mobile phones to start with. But uh, uh, recently I was following him for a little bit more than a year. He was developing this uh, computer called uh, TinyBox. And originally he wanted to run only on one power supply, but uh, currently he runs on two. So each one is uh, 1.6 kilowatts. So we're talking about uh, more than three kilowatts of energy in this box. So he uses six GPUs. His original intention was to use AMD 7900 XTXs, uh, but uh, he had a lot of problems with them. So here he writes, when I started, I didn't understand where the problems lie with AMD, which is a manufacturer of those GPUs. So this is this GPU. I thought it was the driver, but it's not. Uh, TinyGrad is now submitting directly to GPU. It's the firmware and it uh, might even be the hardware. NVIDIA deserves to be the king. So now uh, he produces uh, two versions. One is with AMD and another is with NVIDIA 4090. Uh, there are difference in prices. Uh, I think the two versions are 15K and 25K but it's a very very powerful machine so if you're considering um, i don't know what the time uh, line like if you place the order when you will actually get it but it's a very interesting project so it has 128 gigabyte of uh, system memory it's very high performance it, it's a good machine so yeah there are a lot of videos where he demonstrates how he tests hardware so it's it's, it's very interesting person okay hacker <laughs> Uh, how to access uh, ChatGPT and ChatGPT 4.0. Um, so it's in many places, right? Microsoft Copilot, Microsoft Bing, and, and so on. People were complaining that the free version is limited and it tends to time out uh, and so on. Uh, I have a paid version of uh, ChatGPT. So uh, in my menu, I have GPT 4.0, GPT 4, and GPT 3.5, which is of course useless. But GPT 4.0, yeah, it's uh, for me, it's the default. Uh, if you don't have an account, paid account with uh, OpenAI, then uh, you will not have GPT 4. Okay, 
And there are other options where you can play with it. OpenAI Playground, Overview, Merlin is a browser extension which you can try. Um, okay, benchmarking running Llama 3. I haven't actually finished this because I asked several people to provide benchmarks and I didn't collect all the information, so I probably will get it next time. But for Grok, um, you know, Grok uh, creates their own custom uh, chips and uh, cards and computers and uh, uh, available online. So I ran and this, this is uh, statistics and it's interesting. So for Llama 3, 8b you can get 870 tokens per second this is like hilariously fast and and the price is also very very reasonable so um, yeah in fact uh, in my own work we uh, used uh, grok like for testing for development uh, it's good it's available via api um, qualicom snapdragon x Lite. Uh, remember i spoke about the new laptops um, for microsoft and uh, there are a lot of uh, manufacturers right so we're talking about uh, microsoft surface lenovo dell asus and so on these are di different models which will be available in the second half of june so qualcomm itself is an american company it's in california in san diego this is south of california since 1985 so it creates semiconductor software and services related to wireless technology so mostly it's known for uh, cell phones, but now they're venturing in laptops, right? And uh, there are three versions of this uh, chip, right? So it's not CPU, it's a system uh, on a chip. So it contains a CPU, a GPU, and an NPU, neural processing unit, and it may have up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. Uh, memory is not on the chip, my understanding, but uh, still, it should be, like, they claim it's even faster than uh, uh, MacBook uh, Air uh, with uh, Apple Silicon. So we'll see, probably in a month we'll have some real tests. Okay, I really like this channel. Uh, the author of this channel, uh, Hannah Berge, uh, well, she is actually, uh, she makes uh, videos in Russian and in English, mostly in Russian, but uh, in English too, and it's a very, very good channel. So I, I recommend to subscribe. Uh, it's both entertaining and educational. And uh, in one of her last videos, she talks about uh, different uh, apps, which she explored and she explains them and recommends them. So these are some links of those apps. Uh, so she is in uh, San Mateo and she actually graduated from university there. Uh, San Mateo, I've been there. We were uh, going out on the boat to watch uh, whales. So it was, yeah, it, it's good. Uh, miscellaneous news. So Google Firebase uh, GunKit. Uh, so Firebase is uh, Google's uh, framework, so it's, you go in the browser to firebase.google.com and they have a lot of services. Um, one of the services I personally used was authentication, so if you're creating your own website and you want people to be able to log in, uh, you can define authentication using Firebase. So, and uh, it has all the features, so for example, you want dual authentication using your cell phone or some other uh, all the options, it's for free, but they have so many other options. They have search, they have database, this and that, and now they have uh, GenKit for uh, AI. So this is an uh, additional feature, so you can now include AI into your web or mobile applications. Uh, this is a great, great speech by Grant Sanderson. I love him. He is the creator of a YouTube channel, Three Blue, One Brown great speech amazingly talented person i highly recommend to listen okay scarlett johansson <laughs> versus open ai so th this is uh, both companies uh, lawyered up um, what happened uh, people said that the voice uh, uh, be behind the gpt uh, is called sky uh, that th this is actually her voice at least it's very very like uh, reminiscent uh, OpenAI removed her voice, but said it's not her voice. But anyway, now it's between lawyers discussing this issue. Uh, Microsoft Fi 3 Medium 128K Instruct. Okay, really interesting. Uh, so Fi is a very small model, 
but uh, now they have context length 128 and it performs very well uh, blend ai uh, so this is a service which can handle millions of phone calls simultaneously so ju just interesting I if you need uh, to handle big volume of phone calls uh, there is already offering like that which you out of the box you can use um, axolotl uh, so this is this uh, strange uh, marine animal and uh, it's also a framework on github uh, to do fine-tuning of ai models and this is really a most common uh, go-to framework if, if you want to do uh, fine-tuning they support uh, many different protocols um, OpenAI and NewsCorp. So NewsCorp, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, like it's a holding company, I guess, which includes the Wall Street Journal, New York Post, uh, The Times, and many other publishers. They made uh, a partnership with OpenAI. So agreed to bring its new content to OpenAI platform. Remember, New York Times was suing uh, OpenAI. So now uh, OpenAI is making uh, partnerships uh, with a lot of content creators. Okay, uh, Apple is shifting from its device-based processing to integrating cloud-based services. Uh, so what what it is? So the original plan for Apple was to only use LLMs running on the device, on the phone, on the computer, on the tablet. But they realized that if they want to use like a really, really powerful model, the best model, um, they should use the ones available, let's say, from OpenAI. Uh, Open and now they're making this uh, partnership. So they will integrate OpenAI uh, into uh, their iOS 18, so this uh, operating system for their iPhone, right? So this is a new partnership. Another re interesting model development, it's Meta's uh, Chameleon. So this is the article, and this is early fusion model. What it means is that when they're training the model, it's a multimodal model. Uh, so it can handle images, code, text, and other types of inputs. And the model is trained from ground up using all these uh, different uh, modalities. It's kind of similar to how the Gemini was trained, the Google model. Uh, so we will see. It's early to say, but th this is a publication. Uh, Eric Schmidt, ex-Google CEO, uh, made a very, uh, I don't know, grim <laughs> video uh, on YouTube. It's an interview. And he, uh, well, I wouldn't say afraid, but he predicts there may be very bad outcomes from AI that there are many people who are bad and will use this force for bad things. And he predicts that the most powerful AI systems will be housed on military bases in the US and China, protected by armed guards due to their potential to absorb knowledge in an unprecedented rate and collaborate autonomously. Okay, uh, Skynet, I guess. Uh, but uh, in, anyway, so th this is the list for a New York Post article, but there is also a video on YouTube. Uh, Cognition Devin, uh, you remember, um, uh, so this is a startup called Cognition, and they created the software called Devin, which can write software for you. It's a software agent. So now they made a partnership with Microsoft, so the Devin will be available as one of the many services on Azure Cloud. Okay, so another, th this is very interesting article and uh, Sandra, thank, thank you very much for recommending it. It's coming from Israel Institute of Technology and Google Research. And uh, the question is, does fine tuning of LLMs on new knowledge encourage hallucination? And the answer is, uh, as I understand, is yes. So you want model to learn some new stuff and it eventually learns, but uh, it also increases hallucinations when you ask uh, questions related to this new knowledge. So I guess it learns, but not enough. Uh, okay, uh, next is, uh, as usual, crowdsourced arena leaderboard. So you see that GPT-4.0 is on the first place and uh, it's 95%, so it's well above GPT-4 Turbo and uh, other models. The green ones is uh, some of the open source models. It is Llama 370B, 
Lama 3 8B, Mixtral 822 b which is pretty big, and Mixtral 877 b There are some other models, like from Alibaba and whatever. These are not the only open source models, but these are the one I just uh, wanted to show. And uh, next is uh, the layoffs. So as usual, we have uh, previous year and this year, there are much less layoffs. And in fact, I'm bombarded with uh, job offers. And uh, so, yeah, it's a good time to be AI specialist. That's it. Uh, this is me as usual. And uh, thank you.